All right, Mitch. Uh, congratulations. How are you this morning? Thank you. Thank you. We're very pleased, um, you know, to get a couple of players that we think are going to help. And yeah. One of them went to Duke, which is a problem, but I'll get over it. Uh, <laughs> when did you decide, Mitch? I think I've asked you this in previous years. The car ride, the practice, the videotape. When did you decide? Because I think Chris Dunn's a hell of a player, too. When did you decide Brandon Ingram's our guy? Well, there was a lot made about you know two, play, two players being at the top, and after that there was a cliff um, you know, where you know, there are another four or five players kind of lumped together. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but we did like both players um, at the top. Uh, we did not get a chance to work out, um, you know, Simmons or visit with him. Um, you know, there was, my understanding, one visit, and that was with Philadelphia. Yep. So uh, we, we had a feeling that Philly was going to take him, and if they did, we were going to be very, very happy with who we got at number two. Um, listen, Brandon Ingram, and I'm, I'm not a scout on this stuff, uh, Mitch, I don't know. I, I, I think D'Angelo Russell is going to be an 18-point-a-game guy in this league with a three ball. I think Brandon Ingram is going to average more than that. But expectations are what get coaches and GMs fired. If I said to you, he's going to be 19, he's going to average 10 his first year, 14 his second, then third year, he's going to pop. Is that realistic? Well, for a young player... Um, at 18, 19, he's still 18 years old. I think he'll turn 19 in the fall. Um, you know, I think that is realistic. I, I don't really focus on, you know, how many points he's going to average. Um, you know, in our league, there's, there's so many games, and, and there's so much time spent, you know, with minutes. That guys are going to score if they have the ability. Uh, what separates the, the really good players from the great players, you know, are the other parts of the game, which is, you know, defending, you know, rebounding, being a good teammate, understanding the game, making yeah. the right play. I think both those guys will score, though, the two guys you mentioned. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a, there was an understanding, uh, Mitch Kupchak, Laker GM, there was an understanding, Mitch, and I think it was a realistic one. It wasn't a, t a terrific draft. Next year's draft appears to be better. And um, so I imagine some teams tried to trade down. D did you get, can you say now, did you get a bunch of calls for the number two pick? There was a lot of interest in number two. Uh, I think that there was this, this feeling that, you know, there were two players at the top, and then there was a drop. Um, I'm not sure a lot of the teams um, felt really comfortable being somewhere between three and seven, you know, because the guy that um, one team might have a seven, then another team might have that player at three. Right. Or a team that might have a guy at three, another team might have him at 12. So there was a lot of interest. You know, in two, and I think that's because a lot of people felt that there were two teams, two two players at the top, and then there was a drop. You know, whether that's true or not, you know, we'll we'll find out. You know, years from now, we'll look back on it. But there was a lot of activity. Uh, there wasn't much that we would do to trade the pick. We felt very comfortable with, with either one of those guys at the top. We, 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 there, uh, somebody reported that, listen, you're not going to do a deal with the Celtics. The rivalry uh, is too intense. <laughs> well, what do you make of it? Because I don't like to hear that. I think you should make deals with anybody. When I hear you won't make a deal with the Celtics, is that a bunch of hooey or is it real? Well, it's, it's a real rivalry. Um, <laughs> You know, there's no doubt. When I came here in '81, you know, the franchise had yet to beat the Celtics in the playoffs, and um, we, we got beat in '84 by them. And many people think we should have won that series. And then we finally broke through and won it in '85, and then we won it again in the '80s, and then, of course, I think five years ago in 2010, yep. you know, we won that seven-game series. So, so this you cannot deny that that there's a real rivalry and. You know, working with Jerry West for 14 years uh, and then playing for him, you know, um, we spent many, many hours together. And, you know, the frustrations of what he went through as a player in the 60s, it's real. You know, so so I do talk to Danny and um, Danny Ainge, and, and we do talk about proposing deals to each other. We haven't done a deal in a long time, so I don't know what that means. But, well, at least you call him. It's not like you hang up on him or don't take his call. <laughs> seems, seems, seems awfully gracious of you. Um, listen, the new reality with a salary cap is everybody's going to be overpaid, not name LeBron. I mean, that's just the reality of it. We're, you guys are all going to have to deal with good players making great money. You do not have a center. Al Horford's available, high IQ, smart, veteran, very mature, good for your young players. He'd probably average 16-10 if you gave him the minutes. 
Here's my question to you. How comfortable are you giving good players 25 to 30 million? Do you have a threshold that you will not go over? It's going to be an adjustment. You know, every four or five years, you have to reset, you know, the way you look at the game. Uh, you know, every five or six years, there's a new TV deal, and that generates additional revenue, which the players share in, so it drives the cap up. And uh, our sport's been doing very good, um, you know, seems to be spreading across the world. And yeah. A lot of great interest. So I think that's going to continue. But there is a reset, you know, every four or five years, and we're going through one this summer. Yes. Uh, on top of that, there'll be another reset next summer when the cap's going to go up another $15 million. So uh, you, you have to just get used to it. And you if, know, I said Al, paid, if, if I said Al Horford, $30 million, does your stomach get in knots, or is that the new NBA? Well, I can't I can't really comment on other teams' players, um, but I think what you're saying is, um, you know, will there be players out there, you know, making money that no one's seen in this league ever, and is that going to be an adjustment? Yeah, yeah. The answer is yes. Um, you know, and and we've always had a player that I felt was underpaid for many many years, you know, because of the cap and because of the maximum cap on on players salaries which is kobe i mean if he were a free agent and there were no cap at all i mean just imagine what he can be worth in the open market um and and those players are few and in between too so you will see players that that don't really sell tickets that are going to get paid a lot of money right but the money's going to be there and it has to go out mitch do you regret it all because some people have said we haven't seen enough of d'angelo russell or randall they have the jordan clarkson they haven't gotten enough minutes yet now we're going into year two for d'angelo and we we wish he would have played 30 minutes every game is there any tinge any little bit of regret paying Kobe that, but really keeping Kobe around because many have suggested it stunted the growth of your young guards. No, there's no regret whatsoever. Um, Kobe put in 20 years. Uh, every penny that we paid him, you know, he earned, uh, whether it's, you know, through performance, um, you know, what he's added to our franchise. You know, he certainly paid his dues in terms of injuries the last three years. Yeah. Uh, so he's given everything that he could possibly give. And, and, you know, the last game of the year this year, um, I don't think anybody can say that they're not happy that the Lakers kept him around for that last game. I mean, that last game was just it's almost like winning a game seven. It really was that, that off the charts. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mitch Kupchak, Laker GM, a lot of international players taken. And, uh, you know, I mean, Chris Dunn's a heck of a player, and, and Phoenix said we're going to go get an international guy who averaged five in Israeli basketball. And, and, and I don't know, he could be great. Um, but international basketball, uh, when they haven't played in the country like Akeem or Duncan or Nash, when they're just international, you know, I mean, we've had some Manu Ginobili's and we've had some Dirk Nowitzki's, but most of the great stars in this league happen to be domestic uh, kids. Is it a fair criticism to say sometimes you general managers nitpick the American kids a little and like the mystery and the intrigue sometimes of the international player? I think it's fair. Um, you know, this year I think there were 14 uh, players international in the first round now several of them you know although they were born somewhere else went to high school here so they might not be viewed as international uh, but there were 14 players that were born and raised in other countries uh, you know from australia to europe to haiti so um i don't think that's going to go away i think it's great for the game um i think our players in our country you know should take note you know that um there's a lot of talent in the world and you have to continue to work. You have to continue to try to play the right way and, and act, you know, professionally. But you're 18 or 19 years old. It's not easy. Uh, and I think our kids sometimes, you know, are a little bit more pampered than some kids in other countries, which is great for us. But I think it puts the other kids a little bit ahead around the world. You know, they, they leave home when they're 15 mm-hmm. and go play for a club. Uh, that doesn't really happen in our country. That's interesting. All right, Mitch. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be optimistic here because somebody in your front office said, "Hey, why don't you be nice to Mitch Kupchak for a change?" <laughs> and I said, "I love Mitch. Mitch answers all the questions." So I'm gonna be optimistic. So you won 17 games. I'm gonna say Luke's gonna give you seven. A new big man's gonna give you three, and all your young players developing is gonna give you ten more wins. It's 20 total, 
37 wins. Now, I know you don't. You're not going to tell me this, but you, you kind of you're thinking to yourself, if I said to you one more year of rebuild under 537, unrealistic, realistic. Yeah, I don't think that's unrealistic at all. Uh, I think it's unrealistic to think that uh, the Lakers are going to be able to compete with um, Oklahoma City, you know, a year from now. I mean, that's a team that's been in the conference finals. I, I don't think that's realistic, and, and they won close to 50 games. Uh, a 20-game improvement would be great. Now, that may or may not get you in the playoffs. It probably won't. Uh, we're hoping to do better. But to me, the most important thing is, is not so much winning – all the games we can win this year, I mean, we could add veteran free agents that may be a little long in the tooth and try to win maybe an extra four or five games. But the most important thing, I think, okay, is, is to develop our core, add the right free agents if possible, and every 10 to 15 games next year, uh, knowing you're going to lose some of them, but show improvement and, you know, bring something to our, our partners and our fans that they can watch over an 82-game schedule and say, you know something, uh, it's kind of been a long season, but I see improvement, you know, as the season goes on, and they're fun to watch. So, so that's what I think the most important thing is. We do have to win games. That's the bottom line. But I would like to just see a team that improves as the season goes along, and they're fun to watch. Thank you for coming on. Have a great weekend. Congrats. You got yourself a guy who's going to be a heck of a player in a few years. Thanks, Mitch. Oh, thank you. Mitch Kupchak.